What's going on, Jerome's? So, beautiful Sunday. Time to fire up another seven-round Vikings mock draft. But, so, we're currently watching Liverpool Man United game right now. Uh, they just tied things up two to two. Our guy, Mo Salah, Mo Salah, running down the wing. Uh, just uh, kicked the penalty to level things up at 2-2. Two -two. Uh, right meow. Uh, Arsenal is still technically leading the Premier League table because of goal differential, but... Actually, I, I, I think two guys just died. That's the thing about soccer. Like, I, I feel like every single time someone goes down, you're like, oh, that guy is dead. Oh, no, he's fine. Yeah. Uh, anyways, the, the whole thing about it is Liverpool was down 2-1. Had a lot of chances. Gave him away, gave away, gave away. Now, also, home cooking from the refs at Old Trafford. Stupid Man United and their stupid faces and their stupid everything. Also, so we give poop to Joe Buck for being biased against the Vikings. My God, NBC. Uh, so, so you know here, you know here that uh, Manchester United is the greatest team in all the world, and Liverpool is a bunch of tosses and sheep shackers and blah blah blah, and everything that Man United does is so just. <clears throat> it's frustrating, man. Anyways, uh, so uh, we're, we're in the 86th minute. There's gonna be some stoppage time added on. So, if we, this is gonna be fun. I mean, the draw on the road at Old Trafford ain't the end, end of the world. And, but they still have some work to do since uh, uh, Arsenal does have the, the lead and goal differential. But uh, a win, we're going to go off. All right. But seven-round Vikings mock draft. Let's have some fun. Like, do we trade up? Do we do the damn thing? All right. So let, let us uh, – let, let's zoom in and enhance. So starting draft. Hmm. Uh, Caleb William – actually, ooh. All right. So commies at two. They take Drake May. Uh, ooh. All right. So – Patriots take J.J. McCarthy, which isn't out of the realm of possibility. So, I just want to take it nice and slow. All right. All right. I think it's going to take more uh, than 11-23 uh, to get up to four. Because I'm sure that the Giants would be champing at the bid. Uh, I'm sure that the... Uh, I, I'm sure that the Broncos, as well as the Raiders, potentially uh, could be going after Jane Daniels, too. But uh, we're going to get this in. Offer trade. Enhance. We're on the clock, baby. And now we take Marvin Harrison Jr. Could you imagine? Like, hey, singing Sam Darnold. Like, I think that he could be a little something, something. But so Jefferson, Addison, and Harrison Jr. I mean, at a certain point, you're going to have to pay him. <laughs> All three of them, which would be ridiculous. But anyways, uh, we are going Skull SU. And I, I again, I fully understand. Uh, well, well Jaden Daniels didn't want to work out for the Vikings. I, I think it's more Jaden Daniels and his representation, like, but, well, the Vikings aren't in the top four right now. And Jay Daniels probably is going to go number two to Washington. Maybe there, there's already a wink nudge implicit agreement there. But if he does take a tumble, Skull SU is in effect, man. And Jay Daniels, I feel like his arm and his accuracy is underrated just because of how dangerous he is on the ground. He and Jefferson already have that chemistry uh, going way back. So, yeah, so Jay Daniels is your guy. And I'm kind of fired up about that. All right, so now the Vikings, uh, we have a suite of fourth-round pick. Oh, no, no, no. So this is what happens. If, if you slow it down, and then, then all of a sudden it becomes very, very slow. But it's okay. We, we, we can vamp. We, we can have filler here. But, oh, this is going to be painful. Mm. Uh, anyways, um, so now the Cardinals at 11 taking Terry and Arnold. Also, so one of the reasons why we picked Liverpool. So we picked Liverpool because we wanted a team – because we didn't really know a lot about soccer. Like, we grew up, you know, playing soccer just like most American kids do because it's a very easy sport to have a gaggle of young kids play. But, I mean, the world – I mean, the world's game is football, not American football, which, you know, we don't really use our feet. We throw uh, – ooh, ooh. Oh, they had a chance in the six-yard box. Come on. Also, Darwin Nunez is probably the most frustrating player that I've seen in a long time. Where I, I know that they completely revamped their attack, but uh, so I, I became a ooh, seven minutes of stoppage time, plenty of time for a late goal. Let's go. Um, so th this is a complete reversal of Ferguson. Is like, oh, let's just play until Man United wins. No, screw you, screw you, Fergie. Anyways, but uh, so we became a Liverpool fan like three, four years ago. So, uh, I mean, two or three, so, somewhere in there. But so we, we grew up with the attack of Mo Salah in his prime, Sadio Mane, who, I mean, Sadio plays 
Sadio would have been a great free safety in the league. He does not give an F, man. Uh, he plays hard, which is great to see. Where tough physical play, yeah, and sometimes it's <laughs> sometimes it's hit, or, it's hit or miss in soccer. But Sadio brought it. Plus, also our guy Bobby Firmino, number nine, was fantastic. It was fantastic. And Darwin Nunez is really frustrating to me because obviously he costs a lot of money. Plus, uh, he he was the the runner up because uh, Harlan uh, went the stupid Norwegian, like the seven foot tall Viking who's doing great things with Man City. Um, I mean, Liverpool was in on him, but I mean, Man City they they, they got more money for some reason. It's weird. Uh, anyways, but the Nunez was the the silver medal, and I don't know. Like, just, I I feel like he he leaves a lot of. He leaves a lot of things out on the field, and not like saying that it's full on effort, like leaving it all on the field. There, there was one where they they had a breakaway, they had numbers, and all he had to do was just dink it back to Slobersly, and he would have had an open net goal. And I, for what for whatever reason, he just put in across uh, ac- uh, across the six yard box. It's just things like that all the time, where I. Like I, I I don't trust Nunez on the field. Can, can we speed this up one time? Do I do I have to make a trade to speed this thing up? Maybe. Um, all right. So Chiefs, how about you give me that, and then you give me that. <laughs> all right. Why not? We'll, we'll we'll see we'll see if this speeds things up. Resume. No. Do we actually have to pick a player? All right. It's all right. We'll we'll vamp. Uh, or won the ball back. Come on, Gakpo, the Dutch. Oh, that's a foul. So, all right, yellow card. Yellow card's a great band, by the way. And I, I, I assume that yellow card was named after yellow cards in soccer. But who knows? I mean, how, how can yellow card be bad? They have a guy, they have a violinist in, in their rock band. And, and it's not like a, a fiddle in like a country band. Because if you're going to play in Texas, you got to have a fiddle in the band. All right, Mac McAllister. Oh, McAllister's the real reason why Argentina won the World Cup, by the way. It was not 37 bajillion years old uh, Lionel Messi. Even though, I really respect what Messi does. In my opinion, I think Messi is the greatest player of all time. But I, I understand the the debate. Him, Ronaldo, Mo Salah. <laughs> oh, in the ball! Oh! Oh, Lordy. Sweet Jesus. Hmm. So one of the reasons why I, I love Premier League football is that I can just be a fan. I can just be a, a jabroni, super casual, boo, fan. Where I, I feel like w- with the Vikings and the NFL, I feel like we have to be like relatively objective. And yeah, I mean, this is still a labor of love, but uh, eventually it does turn into a bit of a grind where... I think it has effect affected my fandom to a degree. So that's why I, I do love Liverpool. Like I don't have to live and die with every single transfer. I don't have to live and die with every single news report. I can just be a fan. I could turn the game on on Saturday or Sunday or Thursday when they're playing in the Champions League. Oh, wait, they're not playing the Champions League this year because last year they were garbage. Hmm. Um, or you know, watch them play in the Europa League or whatever and just be like, hey – Go team, go team, go team. And then an hour and 45 minutes later, I just be like, all right. Like, it, it doesn't affect my day. It doesn't affect my mood. It doesn't affect my week. Actually, actually, not going to lie. It maybe, maybe it does a little bit. <laughs> because, come on. Jurgen Klopp, this is final year. Let's win the league one time. All right. We're back on the clock. Jesus. All right. So, have a quarterback of the future. Dwayne Carter is there. Tyrone Tracy is there. Estimate is there. Trevor Keegan is there, Cam Hot, uh, LT3, Anaya Smith, Elijah Jones, Cooper BB in, in this spot. So, all right. So, I mean, Dwayne Carter is the easy answer, right? Uh, so, Vaki is there. Marshawn Lloyd would be a lot of fun, too. Jacob Cowing. Uh, if you wanted Deshaun Jackson type, G- DJ James. I mean, doesn't have that physical um, upside necessarily. All right. Um, in, in this spot, all right. We are going to indeed take Dwayne Carter. One of our old standbys, all heart and hustle, great leader out there as well. And now the uh, the draft is still slow. It's okay, uh, but I, I think so. Carter, so he's got the run defense um, floor. Uh, I think that he does have upside as a pass rusher. 
but that that's going to take some time to develop. Right. Uh, and, and he will put in the work, and I think that he would be a great asset along the front. Uh, he's versatile, can play three tech, can play four tech, five tech, basically can play all along the defensive line, uh, can play you know, pass rushing nose tackle as well. So having that versatility, I think, will be key. Oh, there you go. And it's a Manchester United defender with a bad haircut, man. I don't know. Also, it really irks me that Bruno Fernandez scored the first Man United goal because I don't know what it is. He bothers me. <laughs> Maybe it's just because he's the best player on arrival, and also because he's kind of one. You notice that, like, I I don't let ooh. I mean, yeah, Kelleher's let in two goals, but except he's made two amazing saves. Also, I I, I like that our number one goalie's name is Allison, and he's like a six foot four Brazilian god. All right, so now. All right, so we're back on the clock. McKinley Jackson is there. I mean, we, we could certainly double down on the defensive line because Jackson is more of a true blue uh, nose tackle. Uh, Kamal Had Hayden uh, from Tennessee. Mo Kamara is the guy we go with quite a bit. Uh, let's see here. Shipley is there. Cedric Gray. Where's Gray Johnson? Christian Boyd. I mean, I, I, I do love me some Boyd as well. Mason Smith. I, I mean, Mason Smith is a bad dude. Betting on that physical upside. Uh, does does have some physical injuries. Um, Theo's. Um, all right. All right so, ah, I mean, do we just go Mason? LSU, LSU? No, why, why the hell not? So we got Dwayne Carter. We got Mason Smith. So we got two uh, very key pieces to the Vikings defensive front going forward. As we. The waiting is the hardest part. Also, it's funny how they, they cover up their mouths. Because like. Well, what what if there's what if there's professional lip readers in the crowd? Hmm. You notice that? Uh, also, I feel like NBA players do it a lot now too. Where in the NFL, it's just like whatever. That's a free kick. Oh, ramen noodle hair had a chance, man. And that's it. That's full time. All right, two two. Um, all right, so the. A little bit frustrated. I, I, I thought I thought they were going to sneak a last second goal. I thought that there was going to be a, a little bit of just a little miracle all, all up in there, but what was it meant to be? It, it is what it is. So I look at the Premier League table right now, and hence. Hmm. All right, so uh, Arsenal is up at the top. Um, everyone has 31 matches in. Ooh, Aston Villa is 32. They're not going to be a factor anyway. But oh, good for Aston Villa, by the way. There you go. Even though they fired Steven Gerrard. How dare you? Uh, but, all right, so Man City. Man City is always tough. They're just lurking. Arsenal, whatever. Arteta. Hey, 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 diet, Pep. Get the hell out of here, man. But, uh, yeah, Liverpool. I mean, the I mean, the draw is fine. But that's frustrating. It's a little bit frustrating. Uh, where, where are the remaining fixtures? Also, it's frustrating, too, because in, in here in America, uh, the, the home team is generally listed bottom. But in, in soccer, the, the home team is listed first. So that took a, a while to get used to. Uh, so Crystal Palace. Uh, so they're hosting Crystal Palace next next Sunday. And Crystal Palace is where uh, Ted Lasso was filmed. Uh, th their grounds was uh, Nelson Road. Uh, then they're at Fulham, uh, Europa League, whatever. Ooh, the Derby. Uh, Everton, then they're then they're at West Ham, and then they're hosting Tottenham, and Villa is going to be tough as Villa's uh, trying to stay up uh, in the Champions League places. Then you got Wolves, Liverpool. Ooh, I know that's all right. So, so, so let's uh, so they play Man United and Liver uh, and Arsenal during their season tour. What whatever. God, we're finally back on the clock. Oh, Christian Boyd is there. Why not? Uh, Zach Zinter, Joe Milton, jumping Joe Milton. Let's go. Uh, Drake Nugent. I, I like Drake Nugent a lot, man. James Williams, if we want to keep hammering that defense. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to go. I, I feel like Grayson Murphy is super underrated. And, yeah, he gets overshadowed by, by a lot, too. But I feel like tools and, and projection, I think he certainly could be up there. Let, let's, just, let's get nuts. Let's get nuts. So, a defensive tackle. Got the nose tackle. Uh, actually, no, we, we got our five tech because we got Mason Smith too. So Flores is just completely taking over the board. He's saying like, "F those picks." That's what we're doing, man. All right, five, four. 
three, two. This is this is painful, but this is a good pod. It's perfectly fine. Everything is fine right now, except for my stupid soccer team. Uh, all right, so now Dylan Laub is a, is a ton of fun. Drake Nugent would be would be great value. Foster, I feel like. All right, so the Vikings should be looking for that swing offensive tackle. Uh, Foster could kick inside for a year or two if he wants to get into the derby uh, at guard. Jalen Simpson, Barner, McCaffrey, uh, da, da, Jordan Jefferson. I don't want to trade down. Actually, no. Now it, it's my draft screw. It. All right. So Drake Nugent. All right. So Nugent, multi-year starter, formerly at Stanford. Uh, so he he does have ass he does have mass he does have leadership skills uh i think that he, he won't be overwhelming as an athlete uh, in the national football league but is he a guy that certainly could come in and compete uh in the interior offensive line maybe push for one of the guard spots to start uh, and also effectively take over for bradbury uh, if and when they do part ways with him yes yes i i certainly think that that is true uh so james williams jaheem bell mcgregor in this spot jordan jefferson of course cody schrader russian champ Go, let's go, Mizzou. Uh, Dorian Clark, Jalen Green, uh, Anthony Gould, Aaron Jackson. All right, in the spot. I would do just take Milton just for schnitz and giggles. Uh, I mean, we still have four more picks. Uh, it, it would be funny, but nah, not not meant to be. I mean, Jaheim Bell would make sense here. So James Williams is interesting. Where he didn't test great in terms of being a safety, but he tested phenomenal in terms of being a linebacker. And I think that he's one of those in-between type players can come in and play some very good special teams. I actually, I should just make the pick and then talk later because <laughs> since we're so slow here, uh, but Williams, I think that he would be great uh, in the, in the Flores defense where uh, I think that Williams would come in and basically play the same role right away as Josh Metellus does currently, where is he a linebacker? Is he a slot? Is he a safety? Is he a lot of things? Uh, I think Williams uh, has a dogged uh, dogged determination to go do that. And also, I mean, he'll hit you in the mouth. I, I, I really like James Williams, and that's just the you uh, indeed being the you. Alan Shearer on my TV. Uh, right, so that looks like it's Nashville it is this big uh, American get-together. Rebecca Lowe, what up? Tim Howard. I was wondering, like, like American sports athletes, like, would they translate to soccer? And, and, and of course, like, it's a it's sort of a futile exercise, but also if – all right, so take Justin Jefferson. So, you know, JJ, 6'2", 210, great in the air, uh, huge range, good feet given his route running. And so if you would take Justin Jefferson at birth and put him in a soccer crazed country, put him in Brazil, put him in Argentina, uh, put him in England, put him in Spain, put him in Germany, put him wherever, right? Just put him in a country where soccer is going to be the first, the second, the third, and the fourth sport for him. Would he have developed into a world-class footballer? I think it's possible. I mean, because obviously he's a world-class athlete. And I think that if he had grown up in the culture where it's like, this is what you do, and given his competitiveness, given his, just given his, uh, what's in his DNA, I think that he would have gotten after it. And then he, he would have won the World Cup for Argentina. <laughs> just Karen Messi's old ass. Come on. Come on, man. All right, so this is fun. So, so we got three picks left, uh, 221, 230, and 232. Uh, currently we got quarterback of the future. Jaden Daniels did not give up the future first rounder, which is kind of nice. Uh, we have defensive tackle, uh, in D Wayne Carter. Uh, we got Mason Smith from LSU. Uh, we got the edge rusher Grayson from UCLA, uh, as well as we do. Ooh. So we got James Williams. Uh, all right. So back on the clock, Omar Brown, the pride of Minneapolis North is there just chilling. Uh, Isaiah Davis is there. Certainly could go that route. Uh, all right. So. We are going to go Isaiah Davis. A little bit more of a hammer. FCS, Le'Veon Bell. Runs with really good patience. National champions. Go Jackrabbits. All right, so two picks remaining, 230 and 232. And then we have to wait through the rest of the round. That's great. Actually, because I can't scroll up while picks are coming off the board, right? Yeah, that's annoying. Because uh, I was going to go through and, like, recap what the hell happened in in, in the first round. 
All right, so Brandon Coleman, uh, multi-year starter for uh, TCU, probably going to be kicking inside at the next level, uh, but does have that tackle, uh, tackle flexibility. Ah, there you go. There you go. Uh, OT, OG. Uh, then lastly, uh, let's always get that linebacker just uh, as an homage to Prate Ricke Spielman. Uh, Sheena, Sheena is really underrated. Uh, Trevin Wallace, a downhill heat-seeking missile, tested great as well. Tyler Owens uh, in that mix at Texas Tech. Uh, physical freak just uh, has basically has like a thousand snaps. So, uh, Claude Dukes, I don't know who who are kids. So Trevin Wallace, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here I go again. What's my weakness? Seven round Vikings mock drafts where the the clock is very slow. And uh, again, what, what's frustrating is, so uh, on this, so uh, on the speed here, if you have it slow to start, just to see how the board uh, plays out, and if you want to make a trade up, it's stuck on slow forever for a long time. So you, you can't even change it. Like even pauses in the action, if you try to turn up to turbo, like no, no go. But it happens. But uh, anyways, I had fun talking ish and also talking some soccer. Which I don't do. English people get mad when us Americans call it soccer because the British l literally invented the word. Because the, all right, so the the general accepted theory of it is uh, the entomology of the word is so it's association football, right? And with some of the British accents, so, association, so see, so 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 soccer, 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 soccer. But uh, either way, like. So it's confusing here because we we do have American football, even though the, there's very little to do with feet and kicking. <laughs> also, uh, well, there, there's a great SNL sketch where it's George Washington talking about his dream for America, and he's like, "We shall play football. It's a game that you play with your hands." So there's no kicking in football. There's a little kicking. <laughs> This makes me laugh so much. Anyways, uh, so your Vikings in this seven-round mock draft. Uh, Jane Daniels was available at four. Went and go got him. Now, now, it could be McCarthy. It could be May. It could be whatever. E either way, if you, you determine that it is your guy at four, go get him. Go get you some. And then Dwayne Carter, Mason Smith along the defensive line is going to be fantastic. And, yes, the Vikings didn't get themselves a true blue nose tackle, but also I feel like – if the Vikings would have wanted one, they would have got one. So I, I think that maybe uh, Flores doesn't want to deploy that 330-pound nose tackle. But Dwayne Carter is going to be all heart and hustle, blowing up a gap. He's going to do good, great things. Mason Smith has a physical upside, has huge, uh, has a huge uh, wingspan, and yes, medicals. Uh, but could he come in and just command one of those uh, four or five tech spots for a long time? Yes. And also remember, you have Jaqueline Roy, uh, Mason's former uh, teammate from back in the day. So uh, the defensive line, I kind of like where it's headed. Also, you had Grayson Murphy. Uh, very toolsy edge rusher coming out of UCLA. Kind of got overshadowed uh, by Lao to Latu, but I think that he can develop and grow and show into a great edge rusher of his own. Uh, so adding him to the mix uh, where you do have uh, Murphy in there uh, with Grenard, Van Ginkle, John Ward, Patrick Jones second, and uh, Andre Carr the second guy. Uh, Nugent. Uh, I think that eventually he will take over as a starting center uh, from Bradbury. Um, maybe he gets into the the derby competing at one of the guard spots immediately. James Williams is going to be fantastic on the back end. Don't know his specific role, but Flores will find him one, and plus he'll be a plus special teamer uh, immediately. Isaiah Davis, so bringing some power, uh, bringing the hammer uh, along the in that running back room. A uh, little bit uh, different type of back than uh, a Ron Jones as well as Ty Chandler. Brandon Coleman, so is probably going to be kicking inside uh, in the National Football league but also i think that if he can serve as your your plus backup if he can be sort of the blake brandle adjacent type player uh where he comes in and he can back up four spots that does have a lot of value especially as a seventh round pick and then trevor wallace downhill heat seeking missile uh, physical freak linebacker from uh from uh, kentucky so uh that's it that's how it went down again super slow seven round vikings mock draft you gotta fix those things man anyways you guys know what to do skull production value 